Hello again everyone, welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. My name is Mars, and today we're going to be doing the complete guide for our new bunny girl, Esther. And I have to say, this is a unit that I'm extremely excited about because Esther has a ton of incredible potential. But one of the things that I ran into is that there are a lot of people who A, don't know how to use her, and B, don't know how to build her correctly. So today, those are the two things that I want to talk about because she really is kind of the creme de la creme of damage dealers right now and she's going to hold her own for a really really long time. So if you do have her and you do plan on using her, you're going to want to know how to get the best value out of her. So I figured it would be easier to show you in game so that, you know, you're kind of in the driver's seat to, <laughs> to, to look at our abilities and, and everything rather than going on a wiki page or putting together a slideshow. Um, just because this is what it's going to look like for you when you're playing the game. Um, and I'm going to gloss over the stuff that's not important. So, for example, uh, Shock Flash, not important. <laughs> does a little bit of damage and it fills the LB gauge, no big deal. Shatter Arms and Shatter Guard are handy if you need breaks, but otherwise you're never going to use them. Most of the time you're going to bring a dedicated breaker anyways. Shock Reflex um, is an HP drain ability, which is handy if you need to heal yourself. I've actually used it already in a real trial, so it's handy. Uh, but you're not going to use it much. Uh, just remember it in case you need it. And then there's also another one uh, that heals HP and MP and also fills the LB gauge. So the Shock Reflex and Storm Calling are a couple that you want to keep in your back pocket if you're low on MP or if you're low on HP and you don't have a way to heal. Those are good ways to do that. But for the most part, you're not going to use it. Now she does have an AoE physical cover ability, and most people are probably not going to use this. You can use it if you want her to be your AoE physical cover tank. Uh, it's 100% viable for you to do it like that, especially because when we get the uh, second week event trial to get the, I can't remember the name of the sword, 200 great sword, they just announced it. That uh, 200 great sword of thunder element that also gives some evade. Uh, that'll be a good way to build her as an evade cover tank if you wanted to, but uh, I don't see people using that a lot of the time either. It's definitely a viable option, something to keep in the back of your mind. As far as other abilities we're not going to use, Stasis Bound is another one of those abilities. Uh, it would be better if it lasted longer than two turns, in my opinion. One turn is fine, uh, or, or sorry, two turns is fine, three would be better. Um, and yeah, that's the other thing to keep in mind about the cover is that the cover also only lasts, that, that only lasts one turn. So nifty little ability with a sweet animation that you're probably not going to use a lot. You may have a cheeky opportunity to use it once in a while, but I just, you know, not that important to me. Now if we're going to talk about the stuff that actually matters, there are a few skills that are important to keep in mind. Um, Let's start with, well, we'll talk about Combat Overdrive. This one is handy because it gives you triple cast for the following turn, and it increases the damage of some of, of, some of your chaining abilities. But keep in mind, most of the time, this actually won't fit into your rotation very often. Most of the time, if you haven't used your LB yet, this is a good way to buff yourself if you're like bracing for a burst turn. Like if, for example, you've been fighting Asura and you have five turns of the boss being mitigated, so you haven't used your LB yet. You can use this the turn before you go into burst mode, and then uh, that's a good way to get a little bit more damage out of it because of the attack buff. Now, as far as some of our other skills are concerned, um, Storm Calling is this one. This is a this is also an absolute mirror of equity chaining skill along with Storm Clouds, which is this cooldown skill. So these are absolute mirror of tranquility chaining abilities. So if you're using somebody who is not Esther to chain with Esther. Those are abilities that you can use. In my opinion, you're just going to be better off finding an Esther friend. <laughs> Bring an Esther friend all the time. Don't worry about uh, this ability because it's nice, but you're not going to use it much. Now, Storm Clouds, if you are going to go the Absolute Mirror of Tranquility route, uh, this is a good ability to use because it does increase the damage of your AT chaining ability. So what you can do is you can multicast it like so, to increase the damage of your AT chaining abilities like this. And you can double cast it, you can triple cast it, and it all chains together. Fits neatly as part of her rotation. If you are using her with another triple cast AT chainer, such as Axtar, or even uh, Crappy Vampire Laswell or whatever, those are all good options. But those are not really what I'm interested in. Esther's true power comes when you use her as a 
Limit Burst Chainer. And her kit supplements it very, very nicely. The most important skill to get that off the ground is her Shock Embrace. Um, this ability is really awesome because not only does it decrease lightning resistance for all enemies, it adds lightning element to her own attacks, and it increases the limit burst gauge by 20, and it gives her triple cast. Now the imbue and imperil last for 5 turns, and then the triple cast lasts for 4 turns. So all in all, this is a super handy move to get your rotation off of the ground. I would highly recommend it. A lot of times as an opener, like if I'm going against a boss and I don't have to wait around for things, I'll just use Shock Embrace and then Bolting Strike. And Bolting Strike is going to be your main chaining ability if you're using two esters. This is because it does the most damage, breaks the enemy's defense, and it fills the LB gauge by the most. But now keep in mind, this chaining ability, it is AoE, which is handy for wiping out a lot of enemies and generating a lot of crystals and things like that. But it does less damage than a lot of other chaining abilities if you're comparing damage dealers. So she doesn't get her most value out of this. But what is nice is that if you combo that Shock Embrace with a Bolting Strike, that fills up a total of 40 crystals on the first turn. So you may have your Limit Burst by the second turn. And if you don't, uh, not a big deal. Now her limit burst is where the damage comes in. This is everything for her. <laughs> as you can see, it hits a ton of times. It's super cool. It generates a lot of crystals as well because of the high hit count. And you can see already, um, she was at about halfway full before, you know, we're in the dummy, so she automatically gets a full LB every turn. But she filled about half of it. But if, for example, I'm like, all right, I'm in damage mode and my limit burst isn't full yet, you can just triple cast and you can use bolting strike three times and then I'll give you a full limit burst bar. And then the following turn, you can Limit Burst again. So basically, Esther follows a couple of rules. <laughs> if your LB is up, and your Imbue is up, and your Imperil is up, use her LB. If those things are not up, use skills to get it up. And the way to do that is by using this cooldown skill, Shock Embrace. But if that's not available, another handy trio that you can do is you can Tempest Charge, and you can use Stormbrand. This is an important skill. This will imbue you with Thunder for 5 turns, and it fills your uh, LB gauge by 25%. And then add Demagnetizing Strike. This is an ability that imperils Thunder by 75% for 3 turns, and it also fills it by 15. And then you can use Bolting Strike as your... Th Oops, I must have only double cast it somehow. Anyways, so use Imbue, Imperil, and then chain, and that's going to give you your best value on your downturns. Uh, if you don't have the cooldown skill available for whatever reason, this is a great way to set yourself up for success. You get that imbue, you get the imperil, and then you get the LB fill with bolting strike, and then you can go back to doing your limit burst. And you just repeat this basically over and over again. When you have your shock embrace cooldown to give yourself the imbue and imperil in a single move, use that, and then use bolting strike to fill up your LB as quickly as possible. And then use your LB whenever it's available and just spam it over and over and over and over again and everything that you come in contact with will die. And that's that's basically how I've used her most of the time. I, I haven't touched any of her abilities, I just use her cooldown skill with a bolting strike and then I'll use her LB and then I'll use triple bolting strike LB, triple bolting strike LB and then I'll do the imbue and peril bolting strike combo. So. Um, Hopefully that makes sense. I mean, you can definitely see how I use it in the Tour of Destruction video. It is a lot of fun. Uh, but the next thing I do want to talk about um, is how to build Esther. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put up a little diagram for you here. Now this diagram that you see before you, you may say, Mars, why do you have to tell us to not use Tonitris or Erdrick Sword or Lightning's STMR? Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I've seen people in my friends list use these, and it makes me crazy. Uh, these these are not the things you want to use with Esther. Um, with Esther, she is one of the most curious units in the game that we have right now because of how reliant on LB damage she is. She's not as simple as somebody like Hyo, where a lot of his damage rotation just comes from triple casting things. Uh, Esther's rotation is heavily LB reliant, so not only do we have to balance getting high attack, we want two-handed variants, and we want... Um, and we want the LB modifying equipment. So, um, no to Tonitris, and I want to talk on this a little bit because 
Um, a lot of people have kind of gotten in the habit of equipping elemental weapons on true double hand damage dealers, and we don't have to do that anymore. Okay, we did it for Hyo because Hyo didn't have a way to imbue himself. So for Hyo, it was kind of a no-brainer to say, okay, well I can imperil thunder, but I can't imbue it, and I don't want to use an external imbuer. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to equip Tonitrus, and then we're good to go. But do not do this for Esther. You're going to lose out on a lot of damage. Um, I saw a friend with Erdrick sword and it made me very sad and I saw somebody with lightnings STMR which also made me very sad um, Those those are not choices that you want to make you want to make sure that she has a great sword equipped as her weapon now those of you who are astute viewers you are going to notice and I'm gonna bet somebody made it to the comments before I even commented on this Omega weapon, which is under the yes category. That's the first one, right? That's Hyo's STMR. Yes, correct. That is a one-handed weapon. So it's not going to be as good as a two-handed weapon, such as Cloud or Kingdom Heart Cloud's STMRs. But the thing to keep in mind is that because we're balancing killers and we're balancing limit burst modifiers and there's the option for two-handed variants and there's the option of equipping two of Esther's TMR, um, you can actually have a personal best in slot that uses a one-handed weapon that has a super high attack. Now, I'm going to show two builds kind of side by side that demonstrate this. Um, the first one uses a two-handed weapon such as Revolving Saw. This is a three-star base TMR. Anybody can eventually get this, no problem. She uses one of her own Storm Kickers and then of course um, the reason why, you know, this is a solid build is because, you know, you've got the true double hand going, you get the damage variance from Revolving Saw, so even though her attack is not as, not going to be as high, um, you do get the additional 30% damage variance. Now, if we compare that to the other build next to it, this is the one using Ultima Weapon, which is Hyo's STMR, you can see that it does almost an identical amount of damage, and uh, this is because when you use a one-handed weapon, she gets an extra 100% double hand, so it increases her attack stat by a lot, and then you'll the other thing you'll notice about this build is that it uses another Storm Kicker's accessory, so you're increasing the modifier on her limit burst, you're increasing the amount of attack that you have, and then you'll notice in the Materia section as well that you have an additional limit burst modifier Materia. So War Goddess Insignia, Alliance Heart, and Heart Overcoming Hatred. This essentially does the same amount of damage as a two-handed weapon build. So. Um, <laughs> uh, I am pretty sure it requires you to have Beatrix's STMR for this to even be a viable option uh, for a lot of players, but it's this is just something to keep in mind, and this illustrates a very important point. When you are building Esther, what you have to do is you have to go into the builder, you have to select your enemy type, you have to select the ability that you're going to use, so select, you know, maximize for, for her Raikiri limit burst, her absolute Raikiri, right? And then let it build it for you. And then if you don't have all of your items built into the builder, which I don't, so just click off the ones that you don't have and then tell it to build again. And do that until it has a build that works for you. Because there are going to be times where it's going to be better to use a limit burst modifying materia instead of a killer materia. Um, and that's going to happen if you're fighting stone or machine monsters because she does have super high stone and machine killer. So in those cases, you're not you're going to be better off using Heart Overcoming Hatred or War Goddess Insignia instead of using a killer, which is it's counterintuitive, and this is exactly why you need to use the builder. So overall, <laughs> the bottom line is please stop using Tonadris. Don't use that. Don't use Eredric Sword. Don't use Lightning's STMR. Use a two-handed great sword, or if you're one of the rare people who for whom it's better to use like Lauren or Hyo's STMR, use that instead. But if I catch you using <laughs> if I catch you using Tonadress or Edric Sword or something else like that, I'm gonna be annoyed. Um, other ones you can also use are Bahamut's Tear if you happen to or Tear, I don't I don't know what it is. I never played that game. Uh, Bahamut's Tear, which is a two-handed Thunder Greatsword that increases LB damage. That's gonna be her best friend if you happen to have that. Most people don't, um, in which case 
you can totally go instead for the new event, Two-Handed Thunder Greatsword. That one's handy because you don't have to imbue with it, but the nice thing about Esther is that imbuing is a simple part of her rotation. Like, it doesn't really disrupt her at all to have to imbue. So, um, if you can get higher damage variant, or like a higher attack value, I'd recommend going for that over going for a weapon with innate element. So, anyways, I think I've rambled on long enough uh, about that. But that about sums it up. Um, Esther is such a cool unit for the fact that, you know, she she supplements Thunder super easily with her kit. But also, if you have external imbuers, you can use her for pretty much any element that you can imbue her for. So she really is just an amazing, amazing unit. And uh, let me know your thoughts on your builds down below. I know for me, it's extremely strange. I know I'm going to see people on my friends list who are like, what the hell is Mars doing? He's got, you know, Hyo's STMR on his on his uh, Esther, but for me, that's actually the best in slot that I have because I don't have any Cloud STMR. I don't have any uh, Squall is my best two-handed greatsword, and um, the calculator spit out <laughs> Hyo's STMR, and uh, so that's what I go with. And uh, it's not e-painting or anything. It's 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 legitimately what it is. So pay close attention to your builds. Uh, use the calculator to your advantage. This is one of the most complex units in terms of balancing different stats, so you're going to need to use it for that. And I'll link it down below for people who haven't used it before. And uh, that should be about it. That's been the complete guide for Esther in Final Fantasy Brave Exmius. Let me know your thoughts below. How do you like the unit? How do you build the unit? How have you used the unit so far? I can't wait to hear what you have to say, and I'll see everybody in the next video.